Hello there and welcome back to the So You Pick Job Edition where we have a look at your toolkit, how to get your job stone, your job gauge and how it all works. Now this time we are going to be having a look uh, into the Astrologian job, the first new healer class added to the game with the Heaven's Word expansion. Now they use their astrometer and the power of the stars to heal and buff the party. Quite enjoy the class, I quite enjoy the job, it is quite fun. So, that being said, all of the expansion jobs work differently to the starter classes because none of them start at level 1. They all start at different levels based on what expansion that they're from. Heaven's War jobs start at level 30, Stormbloods are level 50, Shadowbringers level 60, and lastly Endwalkers start at level 70. So when you unlock the job, you're kind of thrown in at the deep end because you suddenly have a whole bunch of skills and abilities instantly at your disposal. So it can be a bit daunting to start off with, trying to figure out what everything does and how everything fits together. So come join us as we dive into Astrologian. You got your cards shuffled, Rin? <laughs> cool. Let's get stuck in. Right guys, so in order to unlock the Astrologian job, you need the following. You need to own the Heaven's Ward expansion and have a combat job at level 50 or higher. However, the Heaven's Ward jobs have the extra requirement of you needing to have reached Foundation, which is the starter city for the Heaven's Ward content itself. So you will need to have completed all of the base game's story content up to patch 3.0. Now once that's done, you will come here to pick up this quest. Now finish his quest and you will be the proud owner of the Astrologian Jobstone, your first astrometer, and two pieces of level 30 healer gear, which drop straight into your armor chest. Now to change the Astrologian Job, you'll be going into the character menu, but unlike the starter classes, you'll be equipping the astrometer weapon and the Jobstone will equip along with it as the expansion jobs work differently. Now for speed, I would suggest selecting recommended gear and setting up a gear set while you're in here. If you don't know how to do that, check the card popping up now to see my short guide on it. But if you're all sorted, congratulations. You're now an official astrologian with a full but messed up hotbar. Now personally, I would remove everything from the hot bar and start fresh because they do tend to place stuff randomly on your bar as it throws it all at you. <laughs> so to do that quickly, you can use the following macro, which will remove everything from that hot bar. So make sure you pick the right one. So this time we're going to do it a little bit different. First, we're going to have a look at your starter toolkit at level 30. Then we are going to have a look at how Astrologian's card system works. Then move on to the rest of the toolkits and how they all fit in. Now straight on to the starter toolkit. Now first up, you will have Malefic. Now Malefic is your single target damage spell. It will deal unexpected damage with a potency of 150 every time you use it. Very straightforward. Now next up, you get Benefic. Now Benefic is your basic heal. It will restore your target's health points with a cure potency of 450. Now it has an additional effect which will grant you a 15% chance that your next Benefic 2 will restore critical health points. Now this additional effect is one of those it's nice when it happens but don't kind of waste time trying to force it to happen by spamming Benefic. Not really worth it in the long run. Just something to bear in mind. Now next up, you get Combust. Now Combust is your damage over time ability. It has an instant cast and it has a potency of 40. And that damage over time will last for 30 seconds. Just try and keep that up as much as possible. Now next up, you'll get Light Speed. Now Light Speed is an ability which will reduce your cast times for your spells by two and a half seconds. And that buff will last for 15 seconds. Essentially, it just means that for 15 seconds, all of your spells will be instant cast. That's the easiest way to describe it. Quite handy to use when you are in a situation 
where you need to do heal a lot of damage quickly or you just want to have some good you have got some good moment for some good damage dealing and next up you get helios now helios is your first aoe heal spell it will restore your own health points and the health points of all nearby party members and it has a cure potency of 330 so if everyone's taking damage pop a few helioses to heal everyone back up at the same time and next up you will get Ascend. Now Ascend is Astrologian's version of the Raise spell. It will resurrect your target to a weakened state. And like the others, it should always be used with Swift Cast. Now next up, you'll get Essential Dignity. Now this is an off global cooldown heal, which will restore your target's health points and has a cure potency of 400. Now the actual cure potency itself will increase depending on how low the target's health points are. So the lower the health points are, the higher the potency of the heal will be. Quite a nice emergency heal and with a short cast time, recast time of 40 seconds, you can use it fairly often. It is quite a good skill. Now next, you will get Benefic 2, which is a more powerful version of Benefic 1. It has a cure potency of 700, so you will be using this one more and more as you get into higher level content. And then lastly, you will have Draw, Undraw and Play. Now these three abilities are part of Astrologian's party buff system, which deserves its own segment all on its own, which we're going to dive into after roll skills. Right guys, so roll skill wise, the healer essentials would be Swift Cast and Lucid Dreaming. Now Swift Cast is an ability which will make your next spell an instant cast. From a healer's perspective, it is mostly used with your raise spell to get a party member back on the feet as quickly as possible. Ideally you should be kept for that. You can recast that every 60 seconds. Jobs are good. And next, Lucid Dreaming. Lucid Dreaming is an MP regen ability. It will that regen will last for 21 seconds and you can recast that every 60 seconds. Ideally use that on cooldown when it, or whenever you reach about 5000 magic points. Between lucid dreaming and all of Astrologian's own MP regen abilities, you shouldn't be having any MP problems. Now, the honorable mentions would be rescue Isuna and Surecast. Now, these are useful to have but they are very dependent on what type of content you're going to be running so starting off with rescue rescue will instantly draw your target party member to your side handy for if you know they're going to be hit by something that they might not survive or they're going to take massive damage you can drag them to you out of range of the aoe quite handy has a two minute cooldown though so use it use it wisely next up as soon as now Azuna will remove a single detrimental effect from your target, something like slow or poison or heavy, something along those lines. It will get rid of one of those every time you cast it on the person. Fairly straightforward. And then lastly, sure cast. Now sure cast will allow you to cast spells without being interrupted. And it also has the additional effect of nullifying most knockback and drawing effects pretty much the caster version of arm's length and that buff will last for six seconds nice and cool again all these three last three are all situational worthwhile having at somewhere on your hop bar and move them around should you need them so with those out of the way let's dive into the cards right guys so all of the healers have their own unique system separate to the core healing mechanics so white mages have lilies scholars have their fairies sages have both eucrasia and cardia and astrologians have a card buff system so let's dive into how the cards work starting with your first three card abilities we have draw we have play and we have undraw now draw will pull one of six damage buff cards out of your deck to use on a chosen party member. And once you've drawn a card, 
you'll be using play, which will trigger your drawn cards effect, giving the buff to that party member. Now please note that once you've used the draw ability, the play icon will change to the card that you've randomly pulled. The card that you pulled will also show up in your job gauge as well, which leaves us with the last skill that you get at 30, undraw which will return your drawn card back to your deck for no benefit at all. Now personally, I find it to be a waste of a hot bar slot because of the way that the card buffs work. That being said, that leads us on to the cards themselves. So there are six basic cards in your deck. The balance, the arrow, the spear, the ball, the ewer, and the spire. Now at first glance, they all look like they do the same thing, which is technically true. They all give a damage buff, but they're actually split into two groups of three cards each. One set, which is better to give to melee jobs, those being balance, arrow and spear. And the other set, which is better to give to a ranged jobs, which are ball, ewer and spire. Now if you use a card on the right person, they will get a 6% damage buff for 15 seconds. If you don't or you can't, however, they will still get a 3% damage buff instead. So don't stress too much about giving them the right to the right people. It's nice if you can as much as possible, but it's also okay if you can't because they'll still get a damage buff either way, which is why I find Undraw to be completely useless because it's better to give someone a 3% damage buff than no damage buff at all which is what happens when you use Undraw. Now, remembering who gets what card seems daunting at first, but it does get easier with experience. Plus, there's also two little hacks in your job gauge, which is called the Arcanum gauge, and that holds all the info about your currently drawn card. So let's put a card right now. Now, your job gauge will show the card's icon, its name, and there are two extra things that will help tell you who to give the card to. The first being the card's border color, and the second being the border's accents. Now we've pulled a ranged card, and know this because the for ranged, the border color is purple, and the ranged cards have circles to the left and right of the border itself. Now, melee, we are looked out on that one, right? <laughs> now, a melee card has a blue border and has a star to the left and right side of the card itself. Very straightforward, makes it, using these little job gauge hacks, makes it a lot easier than trying to remember the, the names of the cards individually. I find this is the best way to dish them out. It makes it a lot quicker. So hopefully that has helped make things a little bit easier for you. So now we've looked into the basic card system. Let's jump into the 30 to 60 toolkit. Right guys, so we're going to dive straight into the level 30 to 60 toolkit. Starting off with Aspect of Benefic at level 34. Now Aspect of Benefic is a small single target cure spell. It has a cure potency of 200 and its main use is the, for the additional effect of regen. It will apply a regen to your target with a cure potency of 200 for a duration of 15 seconds. It's a really handy spell. You want to try and keep that up on your tank as much as possible. That regen all adds up. Now next up, at level 40, you'll get redraw. Now the first part of redraw, it will add an additional effect to your draw ability so that whenever you use draw, you will get a buff called clarifying draw, which will grant you one use of redraw. Now what redraw itself does is once you've drawn a card, if it's not one that you want, you can roll the dice and hit redraw and it will swap that card for another one in your deck another random one really handy for if you don't get the card that you're chasing after you can roll the dice on redraw 
and it comes a little bit more into play at level 50 when you get your level 50 skill. Next up, level 42, you get Aspected Helios. Now Aspected Helios works very similar to Aspected Benefic. It has a cast time and is the AoE version of Aspected Benefic. Now that will restore your all health points and the HP of all nearby party members with a Q potency of 200 for the initial hit and applying a group wide regen with a Q potency of 100 and that regen will last for 15 seconds. And the cool thing is your aspect of benefic and your aspect of Helios regens will stack with each other so you can use them on the same person. And ideally, you want to keep both of those up as much as possible. Just keep them ticking over nice and easy. Next up, level 45, you will get Gravity. Now, Gravity is an AoE damage spell, which will deal unaspected damage with a potency of 120 to your target and all enemies nearby it. If you're in a mob group more than three, start using Gravity when you get a chance to. Now, next up, level 46 you will get a straight up upgrade to your damage over time ability called Combust 2. It will replace it on your hotbar automatically when you are level 46 or higher and it will de still deal on aspect damage over time with a potency of 50 and that dot will last for 30 seconds. Now next up, level 50, you will get three skills starting off with Sinistry. Now Sinistry will let you tag a party member with the Sinistry buff. So every time you cast a cure on someone, whoever has Sinistry will get cured at the same time without you having to target them. It's a very cool skill. Another cool use for it is if you have someone who's taking a lot of damage, you can cast Sinistry on them, then a cure spell, and they'll actually be double healed, which is incredibly handy. And that Sinistry buff will last for 20 seconds. Now, the second level 50 skill is called divination now divination is an aoe ability which will increase the damage dealt by yourself and nearby party members by six percent and that will last for 15 seconds it's a nice damage up buff and you want to be using that whenever it comes off cooldown because who doesn't like extra damage now next up your last level 50 skill is called astrodyne now, Astrodyne is a kind of like a little mini game that gets added to your card system. Now, this mini game only really affects you, doesn't affect the party as a whole. Now, it will upgrade your cards a little bit. Now, every time you use draw, you will draw your card as usual. But at the top of every card, you will get what's called a seal. Now, there's three different types of seal the Lunar, Solar, or Celestial. Now, once you give that card to a player while in combat, you will collect that card's seal. Now, please note, you do actually have to be in combat for the seal to actually be collected. Now, once you've collected three seals, you can use the Astrodyne ability. Now, the Astrodyne ability's effects are influenced by the different seals in place. So if you have one type of seal, you'll be granted a buff called Harmony of Spirit, which will gradually restore your own magic points. Nice little MP regen. Now if you have two different seal types, you will be granted Harmony of Spirit, and you will be granted a second buff called Harmony of Body. Now what Harmony of Body does, it will that will reduce your spell cast time and your recast time by 10%. And lastly, if you click one of each seal type, you will get Harmony of Spirit, Harmony of Body, and you'll get a third buff at the same time called Harmony of Mind. Now, Harmony of Mind will increase your damage dealt and your healing potency by 5%. And you'll get all three of those buffs at the same time, and they will last for 15 seconds. Now, in an ideal world, you would want to have your ultimate buff up as much as possible. However, it generally doesn't happen like that. The card draws are random, so don't get too focused on Astrodyne and don't get too focused on playing cards. Use them when you have a spare minute, but don't use them instead of healing. It's just the healer priority. 
Now that being said, we're going to jump straight into level 54, Malefic 2. Now, Malefic 2 is a straight upgrade to Malefic, your single target damage spell. Straight up upgrade, damage boost, and like Combust 2, it will replace Malefic on your hotbar whenever you are level 54 or above. Now, next up, level 58, you will get Collective Unconscious. Now, when you use Collective Unconscious, it will generate a ring around you which will reduce the damage taken by 10% and applies a buff called Wheel of Fortune to yourself and any party member who enters that circle. The duration of Collective Unconscious is 18 seconds. However, while you're using it, you are kind of soft locked in place, meaning if you move or use another action, it will cancel the area of effect. Now it's best used when you know you're going to be taking a lot of group damage. You can set up a collective unconscious field for that full 18 seconds. Or if you want to just add an extra regen, you can just pop it so that everyone gets the regen and move and continue about your day. And how you can have three regens on the go at one point. Very cool stuff. Quite handy to use. And lastly, at level 60, you will get Celestial Opposition. Now, Celestial Opposition is an instant cast ability that you can use every 60 seconds. And that is an AoE heal, which will restore your own health points and the HP of all nearby party members with a Q potency of 200. And it has another additional effect of a, yet again, another regen. With that regen's Q potency is 100. And like all regens, it will last for 15 seconds use that whenever it's on cooldown nice and cool stuff right guys so that is your level 30 to 60 toolkit now i lump them all up in one chunk because a lot of them are pretty self-explanatory and are like upgrades to existing spells so hopefully that wasn't too much information overload Right guys, so unlike all the other jobs, healers don't really have a rotation per se. They tend to have more of a priority system. Now, Astrologian's priority system is healing the party first, then if everyone's okay health-wise, deal a few cards, and then if you're waiting for uses of your draw skill then throw out some dps that's generally the priority system for astrologian now card wise you get two uses of draw so what i would recommend is in between fights cast draw to put a card in your hand and then leave it and by the time you reach the next major fight you will have your card in your hand and two charges of draw so you can then at the start of battle you can throw out three cards in quick succession getting as many people with your damage buff as possible nice little tip for you there now with that being so simple i'm going to add in a couple of little general healing tips so i'm with number one check out your group now similar to tanks while you're waiting to start it is worth having a look at your party's gear and makeup because that can affect how much healing you may have to do. Now, for example, if your tank is undergeared, they will have less defenses and take a lot more damage from the mobs. So you'll have to focus on healing them more. Likewise, with the DPS, the melee jobs, for example, don't start on getting their AOE abilities till mid to late 30s. So a larger pull will take longer for them to kill adding more strain to you and your MP, as well as the group as a whole. Now next up, number two, speak up. Now don't be afraid to tell the group that you are new to healing or a little bit unsure. And 99% of the time, the rest of your group will offer advice and be pretty chill with any mistakes you may make. So don't be afraid to speak up. Number three, positioning. 
try to position yourself in a spot where you're not going to be taking a lot of damage and where you have line of sight with all of your party because if you can't see them you can't heal them also you don't need to be super close to them but you also don't want to be so far away if you're too far away from the person again you won't be able to heal them because you'll be out of range so be mindful of your positioning number four push yourself now if you're new to healing or a little bit unsure you'll probably find yourself super focused on keeping everyone topped up health wise however with experience and more skills you will become more efficient at keeping everyone alive so don't be afraid to push yourself to find a good balance between healing and dealing both cards and damage and remember it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it just dust yourself off and adjust accordingly and lastly number five be adaptable now sometimes things just don't go smoothly be it a melee dps that stands in front of the boss and end up getting smacked in the face taking massive damage dps dying to mechanics or just people making mistakes just be prepared to adapt to random stuff and generally you'll be fine right guys so this has been our first look into the astrologian now hopefully we've dispelled some of the mysteries on how everything works and how the card system works now if you have any more questions feel free to ask in the comment section below on twitter or in game if you so desire now rin thank you again for the help you've been doing a stellar job lately with all your leveling up you're very welcome you're very welcome now i believe we are going to be finishing off the heaven's ward expansion jobs next time with the machinist <laughs> i do like machinist machine is quite fun is a cool you get a cool multi-tool and everything like that but we're going to have a look at that next time I'm glad you're going to be ready for that one. So, thank you all for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it and have found this useful. If you're new here, feel free to come hang out. Come check out some other stuff I've got going on. We would love to have you here. Subscribe if you haven't to be alert every time I release a new video. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you again for all the support. It is much appreciated. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. And you all know what's coming. Please like, share, comment, subscribe on all that jazz. And as always, we shall see you on the flip side. Bye bye.